I've got a fairly typical bandsaw that you see in a lot of wood shops. It's a vintage Delta Milwaukee, and honestly, it's a great saw. It's got a pretty powerful motor and a riser block and a few other aftermarket upgrades. And really the only thing that's missing is dust collection. I've seen lots of pictures on the internet where people have simply drilled a hole in the side of the sheet metal and added a dust port either here or over here. The only problem with that is that where most of the dust comes out is actually this open air section right under the table. So I had to come up with something different. I started by measuring this little flat section right under the throat plate where the blade comes through. Then I just cut a couple rectangles out of some plywood scraps. I used this cleaning attachment as a dust collection port because I already had it and I never really used it. By the way, don't ever cut a piece of wood just hovering in space like this on the bandsaw. I used my scroll saw to cut an angled hole for my homemade dust collection port to come through the plywood. And for the final fit, I just used a rasp. These little scraps of wood will become the walls of my dust collector port. I just used some two-part epoxy to attach the plastic dust collector port to the wooden section. This project is a bit of a prototype. I wasn't sure how great it would work or if I'd end up just building another one right after this. I also just wanted to get it done and move on to building the next project. So as you can see, it's definitely quick and dirty, purely functional. Hopefully now you can start to see it taking shape and get an idea of what I'm trying to do. I mark these little lines under the bandsaw because this is where the blade will come through. So I'm just transferring them onto each section and cutting them out. When I found these magnets in a drawer, they actually gave me the idea for this project in the first place. Unfortunately, the diameter of those little magnets is actually 15 30 seconds of an inch, so I couldn't use any of the Forstner bits that I own to drill the holes. The holes didn't end up with a flat bottom like I would have liked, but it turned out just fine because it left a little space for the epoxy underneath the magnets. And the big reveal, this is the most beautiful project I've finished all day. This section should pretty much be able to stay in place all the time. But the front section pops right in and out for blade changes. As you can probably see by the dust that's catching that light, it's not perfect, but it's probably about a 90% reduction from how it was before. 
so I'll call that a win. See you later.